So, believers, let us pray, everybody, and then we will rightfully divide the word of truth in Jesus' name under the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we count it as great joy that we are alive and well this morning, not because we are strong, but because you decided to give us added grace. So, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful and wonderful day. I thank you for the love we are feeling, the joy we are feeling, and the peace we are having. Uh, I could be no by no one else and no other power but the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we recognize who you are this morning and as we are getting ready to speak about you, uh, I pray that you'll be in the midst of us. Your words is anywhere two or three gather touching anything concerning you. You are in the midst to bless and do a waiting soul good. So I pray that you will just do that which pleases you this morning. Touch the hearts and minds of your people and I ask of the Heavenly Father that something supernatural will be done this morning morning that the hearts and minds of your people God will be touched and you receive the glory and the honor from this service in Jesus' name. I also pray that you paralyze principalities and powers, shut down the forces of darkness and cancel anything that was set up against this meeting. I decree and declare the plans are powerless, the works are powerless, the strategies are powerless in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God, everybody. Amen. And I'm sure you have communicated with your friends and your family. So let us roll right now. Amen. As was, as it is rather, we are in love month. Someone will say every day should be love. Yes, every day should be love. And every day we are loving people. But we want to highlight love this month. We want to talk about it some more. Amen. A matter of fact, we are already making ground and progress. Maybe last week was good. Review was also good. Person share with their family and friends and it was so good. Now we want to dive in a little deeper. Amen. I spoke about the four major types of love last, last week. But this week, I want to zoom in a little more on what is called the Thalia love. Amen. What it is. Uh, and demonstration of it in the Bible. And then we're going to look at some very important things. So in, uh, believers, please, I need your ears, your undivided attention as we go into it. Yes, it's very important for us to understand how, how this uh, means, how it impacts the church when we operate in this kind of love. We must understand, believers, as we go on here. And I said before, I will be talking to you about a few other scriptures, but I'll give them to you as we go by. But we understand that Thalia love, and it's spelled P-H-I-L-I-A, Thalia love, amen, pronounced with an F sound, right? So we understand here that it speaks of a strong feeling of attraction with it, um, but from the perspective of loving or showing um, care, respect, and compassion for people in need, for example, we understand here it describes benevolent, um, kindly love. And we understand, brothers and sisters, that this is all through the Bible. The word of the Lord speaks about this kind of love. And in the New Testament church, which I'll be speaking about a little bit, is that it was demonstrated in a strong way. The word of God is covered with this failure love. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, the scripture says, Love one another with brotherly love, brotherly affection unto one another in showing honor. Romans 12 verse 10. The love there speaks to phalia love. 
Then we go to Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. It says, No concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for yourself have been taught by God to love one another. That's what um, the Apostle Paul wrote to them. In Hebrews 13 and verse 1, it says, Let brotherly love continue. Let brother love continue. Second Peter 1 verse 7 says, And godliness with brotherly love, brotherly affection, and brotherly affection. Sorry, one, once more. And godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. That's what Peter there um, wrote. First Peter 1 verse 22 says, Having purified your souls, by your obedience to the true, the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. No, brothers and sisters, you can get the, get the drift of where we are going here. That this is what is called brotherly love. A matter of fact, this is why in the church, a man can love a man and it's not intimate. No, and a woman can love a woman and it's not intimate. It means that they love each other so much that they'll go the extra mile to do what is necessary for the individual. And this is the kind of love that the church embraces. No one to take you back old school. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, before Jesus Christ left in his teaching ministry, he spent a lot of time to teach them about how he important this love is a matter of fact brothers and sisters he took time to demonstrate the love and to show them the importance of having brotherly love in the church um the word of god teaches as we go on that there was a point in time when they came to jesus and they were trying to 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 trap jesus in a certain conversation but the word of the lord teaches believers that we know that when it comes to the wisdom of jesus christ he's far ahead the word of the lord says matthew chapter 22 in chapter 22 from verse 34 it says but when the pharisees had heard that he had put the sadducees to silence they were gathered together then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him tempting him and saying master which is which is the great commandment in the law jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart okay then this is what jesus is saying number one he says thou shalt love the lord thy god with some of thy heart no sometimes no he says we should love the lord thy god with all thy heart and then he says and with all thy soul and with all thy mind now we're speaking about the, the tripod man he said we should love him with our entire being we should not just love him when we want something from him we should not just love him when we are sick and we just want him to do something how many persons know that we are living in the time and season where people will love you when they want something from you they will show you all the kind of love when they want you to do something well the right jesus is saying here we should love the lord with our might our strength our soul our tripod man we should love him with he said this is the first commandment and he went on further and he also said to them, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He says, now, come on. First thing, you should love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul. And he says, then you should love your neighbor as how you love yourself. This is so important, brothers and sisters. First of all, I must say that self-love is very important. You must love yourself. You must spend some time and look in the mirror and say, God, I thank you for me. Are you with me? And then he says that you should love your neighbor as how you love yourself. The good things and that you think about yourself. He says, now think about someone in this way. And I'm going to give you a passage following this to emphasize and embrace what is called neighborly and brotherly love. To show you that Jesus Christ was so serious about this that he gave them an example. So now first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Believers, this is serious, you know. This is a serious kind of dedicated and committed love. I want to stress this before going further. That we must understand that love is not talk. 
No, no, no. Brothers and sisters, empty words don't make it in this season. Love is action. Love is a verb. It's not just a noun, but love must be a verb. If you love me, what are you doing? If you love me, you respect me. You're going to see that a little later in the text. If you love me, you show me honor. If you love me, you'll be there for me. We must understand that your love must carry weight. Somebody hear what I'm saying here? Your love must carry weight. It cannot be just empty words. My God. Brothers and sisters, I just want to interject right now because you have to make sure you watch the next video coming up in the, in the midday service. Because I want to talk to you later. I just remember I want to put it in right now. That can we be in love with the wrong person? Then we're going to talk about that a little later. But we must understand here that love must carry weight. You don't just say it. You do it. You demonstrate it. I'm from old school. First of all, I think my mom is online. And she, listen, she's one of the best mothers in the world. But many years ago when we were growing up, you know, mom wouldn't say that she loved us. That she wouldn't say it. But listen, we never doubted one day that she loved us. No, listen, we never, there was never a day we got up and wondered, oh, the, um, the, um, mom really loves us. I'll, and I say us because of my little brother and my bigger brother. We, we didn't have to worry. We didn't think on that. Amen. We knew that she loved us because of her actions, the things that she did for us. She would have gone, she went, she went the extra mile just to make sure that we were happy. We had clothes because, listen, my father died when I was five years old and things got rough, super rough. And my mother stood up like a man and she got things in order and she got, got the house in order. She got things in place. That's why, listen, I will forever love her. Amen. Because she definitely demonstrated real love and true love. I don't know who you have around you just telling you that they love you like this and there's no sign. Ah, somebody's in the house telling you that they love you and there's no sign. Someone who, oh, I love you, I love you. Ah, you love me. You bite me. You love me. You criticize me. You love me. You speak down to me. You love me and you're doing all of that. Listen, there's a question sign on your love right now. We need to have a meeting to sign up where, I mean, do you really love me? Brothers and sisters, you see, we have to, if we love God, we must demonstrate it. If you love God, you should prove it. If you love God, there must be signs and symbols of your love. And now he says, love your neighbor as how you love yourself. So this is so important. And then he went on and he says that. He says, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Believers, what does this mean? He said, law and prophets. Well, the law there signifies the books of the Torah, the five first books of the Bible. He says, upon these hang all the law and the laws and also the prophets. What are the prophets now? The prophets are the prophetical books. So we understand for those who do theology and understand how the Bible sets up, there are the first five books of the Bible, which are called the Torah or the laws. And then there are the prophetic books, minor prophets and major prophets. Now he says, that if you really love me and you love your neighbor, hang all the laws and the prophets upon these things. So in other words, what is more important? He says more important to him than the laws and the prophetic words in the Bible is love. My God. He says more important is love. This is how we must understand here. And I'm going somewhere this morning for us to know that love is not a walk in the park. Love is very important to God. He, it is so important that he's saying that read all the laws you want. Know all the laws you want. Practice all the laws you want. But remember, the most important thing to me, love me, the Lord God, with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And then he says, love your neighbor as your friend. He says, this now hangs all the laws on the law on the prophets upon these two things so important it was no brothers and sisters um let us take a journey right now into luke chapter 10 from verse 25 this now jesus christ was showing them giving them a demonstration of love and when we say we love now jesus was saying to them this is no walk in the park this is serious you got to show that you love now and we're going to determine who has love versus who don't have love now the bible says here and verse luke luke chapter 10 from verse 25 he says and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
you know Jesus was always getting these questions, you know. So, and now the lawyer asks a question. Verse 2, verse 26 says, He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he understand, understanding, and he understanding said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. It comes again. Now, look at verse 28 as we go in. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Love them. Love God and love your neighbor and you shall live. That's how important it is to him. Verse 29, as we go deeper in it. But, but he willingly, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Is it the person who lives the next number beside me? Or the person who lives the next number on the next side? Or is it my sister blood, sister blood brother? Who is my neighbor? Well, Jesus, no. I'm happy he, he asked that question because now we have an answer for all of us as to who is one's neighbor. Jesus said now in verse 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. I want you to just create a picture right now of this person. Half dead. Thieves took away everything from him, and wounded him. The Bible said the thief come to what? Steal, to kill, and destroy. So now this man, he was wounded. He was empty because they took things away from him and he was left at the roadside to die. This was the state of the man. Just think about him now. He, he was bloody. He was messed up. He was bleeding. He was in pain. And he was right there at the roadside. He left from where? From Jerusalem down to Jericho. Verse 31 says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side oh no i can't believe it this is someone who represents us in the clergy this is someone who represents us in church so we would say right now something gone wrong right here because the first thing started out, this don't sound right. It doesn't sound right to know that a Christian, I'm saying Christian priest then, but say Christian now, that this person passed this wounded individual without offering any form of help. This is what Jesus was trying to show them something that was significant. Jesus said the priest passed his way. He saw him, but didn't do anything. He passed and he did not even go over to assist him. Now, hear, what, hear, what, hear, hear this as we go further. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Believers, do you believe that this is happening in this time and season? I believe it's happening even right now. Verse 32 says, and likewise a Levite. A Levite now, remember, the Levite tribe is also a very holy tribe. And when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed on the other side. The priest passed. The Levites passed. But the Bible says, verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. As who? A Samaritan. Someone who, we, who the Bible considered to be unholy. They are not righteous. They are from Samaria. We know that there's a stigma when it comes to Samaria in the Bible. Do you remember the woman was from Samaria? That woman in, in St. John chapter 4 that Jesus met at the well. She was a Samaritan woman. So there was something a cloud over the Samaritans. And they weren't considered to be holy people or righteous people. They were considered to be ungodly people. But now Jesus was trying to say something. Look where hell is coming from not from the priest not from the levi but watch the person who had a good heart no brothers and sisters let us roll into it and when and the bible says here uh, care came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him different from the first two verse 34 says and and went to him and bound up his wounds 
ran to him and what bound up his wounds. I'm thinking he took something to tie it up, to do something as he could at that point in time, just to make sure he got things in order to take him to the hospital. Then the Bible said what he poured in oil and wine. It was a form of healing in those days and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn. So therefore he took him in his car. He took him in his SUV. He took him in whatsoever he was driving and put him right there and said, I'm taking you to the hospital. One, he didn't just look at him, had compassion and move. He looked at him, he had compassion and he assisted him. And not just assisted him by pouring oil and wine in it, but what he did also, he took up the wounded individual. Who was this wounded individual? A stranger. He didn't know him by name. It wasn't his cousin, his relative or friend. He was just an individual on the street, a stranger. But he says, let me take him up and put him in my own, on, on my own in my own transportation and that's what he did and the bible says no as it went on further and brought him to an inn in means hospital there and took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee oh my god what a level of love demonstration of love one he took him to the hospital first of all he he tried his very best to see what he could do to help the man where he was then he took up the man in his own vehicle put him in his own vehicle and carried him and now he was spending his money a matter of fact he didn't just took him to the hospital door and said stay here do whatever you but the bible said he took his own money out and he paid and now he says said no before he went he says that he says, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, which now, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that show mercy unto him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. I want to say to everyone in the Zoom room this morning, everyone watching me by Facebook, everyone who will hear this message, Jesus says, go and do likewise. This is what we should do. Look for those who are in need. Find ways and means how we can assist them and how we can help them. Think about when you're eating those persons who have nothing to eat. When you go to the supermarket and you're shopping, think about those persons who don't have anything and what you can do for them. Brothers and sisters, I remember even being in Jamaica. Every time I traveled, I, rem I said, Reverend and I would come together. We purchased bags of rice and oil and all these things. And I said that every time I travel, otherwise I'm doing tithe, I'm going to sow into the lives of people. And I would just go and say, this is not from the church. This is from us. We want to find persons who are in need and we bless them. It must be a way of life, ladies and gentlemen, that we keep on doing these things. Sometimes there are persons we pay their bills. You have to understand that there are someone's brothers and sisters, that there must be a way where we show love. Love cannot be taught. I love you. I love you, sister. I love you, sister Lisa. I love you, sister Jeminson. I love you, brother Raw. Rob, listen, come on. Don't just tell me you love me. I have some need. Can you help me? Can you help me? Jesus said in the New Testament, he said, if someone comes to you and says that I am in need, don't just send them to brother so-and-so. Don't just send them to sister so and so ask how may i help you what can i do i may not be able to give you a hundred percent but i can give you 20 percent. i can give you a start here i can help you to have a better life brothers and sisters jesus is saying this morning go and do likewise be a good Samaritan to those who are in your community. Be a good Samaritan to those who are in your church. Be a good Samaritan to those persons who you pass every morning. Do you remember the days when you weren't driving and you had to walk the street to the bus stop when the sun, winter, rain, whatever it was? Well, there's someone who is still doing that right now. Now you are blessed with a vehicle, then what you should do, think about those persons who are where you are coming from. Am I talking to anybody here? Do you remember the days when you couldn't find food and you had to pray hard and say, God, can you bless me with food? Do you remember those days? Well, somebody's right where you're coming from. Someone assisted you and a matter of fact, it's time for us 
to turn around and assist someone else. Do you remember when you were going to school and you couldn't find a school fee and you had to pray night and day and ask God for a miracle? Well, there's a student where you are coming from. It's time for us to turn around and go back in that direction and say, I want to pull somebody out. I want to help someone where I was. I want someone to be delivered. I want someone to be out of that. That's my brothers and sisters. Hear me this morning. I come to say to you as the Lord put it in my spirit. We have been praying for revival. We have been praying to be like the early church. But hear me. We have a tendency. We only pick what we want. Yeah, that's what we do, you know. We never ask for the entire package. We only ask for the sweet part and the nice part. A matter of fact, before I say what I want to say, let me give an example. Many persons heard about the miracle of the Apostle Paul. And we say, oh my God, I want to be like the Apostle Paul. He moved from glory to glory. He moved from height to height and faith to faith. He opened blind eyes and he raised the dead. And he did all of that and we preach it and we say, oh, I want to be like Paul. God opened my eyes and the scales fall from my eyes that I can see in the realms as the Apostle Paul saw in the realms. I want to write books as he wrote the epistles, as he wrote and raised up churches. But believers, do you want his suffering? Do you want his hardship? Do you remember that? Do you know that there's a scripture that Paul says, Christ, I was in shipwreck. I was beaten. I was left to dead, uh, left to die. He says, I went through all of that. I was cold sometimes. I was weak sometimes. I was, I was hungry sometimes. I went through this and all of that. How many persons want that? He was bitten by deadly, by a deadly snake. Amen. All of that he went through. No, nobody wants that. All we want is the supernatural. All we want is the miracle working. All we want is that. But brothers and sisters, I must say to us that we cannot flow there unless we take the package. Now, as we speak about the early church, we want the signs and we want the wonders. We want the miracles and the speaking in tongues. We want all of this and we want to flow accordingly. And we say, Lord, give us as the early church got it. We want to do this. We want to do that. But I must say to you, brothers and sisters, the early church was a love church my god can i ring it out this one the early church was a loving church the bible says and i'm going to show it to you in scriptures that they had all things common my god these people they were so loving they were so kind they were so serious about this now acts chapter 2 from verse 42 get ready with me as we flow i hope you're in church with me this morning acts chapter 2 and verse 42 because believers i want to start a revival this morning and this revival is not just speaking in tongues and saying shaka mashanda this revival is not just laying hands and raise the dead but this revival is a revival of love my god not just in cea but in the body of the living christ we need a revival my god and now the Bible says, look at what took place. You can know when God is moving and when God is in the church. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. The word of the Lord said, they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship. To the breaking of bread and to prayer. So prayer was strong in the early church. The breaking of bread communion was strong in the early church. The apostles creed that teach the principles of how they should live was strong in the early church. And the Bible says everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. So the anointing was strong and the power of the Holy Ghost was moving like never before in the early church verse 44 says all the believers were together had everything in common do you know what that means it means that if they saw a believer who was poor my god they would try to see how best they could assist that believer to get that believer up my God, this is what it is. If there's a believer who didn't have a job, they will think about how can we find a job for this believer, how we can enable this believer to have a job so that this believer can move forward. Because they were saying that we want to move forward together, not just to move forward in climbing and speaking in tongues or prophesying, which I'm going to work on a little bit, but it says we must move forward together, together in all things. My God. So it means that if you are blessed, are you thinking about the next person to be blessed too? 
Are you thinking about how we can raise up someone that I'm not just praying for you? I really want to help you. I see that you want to buy a house, but you don't have the deposit. Well, I'm going to bless you with the deposit. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a start because we are brothers. We are sisters. This is what brothers and sisters, sisterly relationship is about. And the one who received the deposit, the purchase his or her house. Then when you get your house, you take from your house and you bless another one. And say, listen, I'm going to bless this one to get a house like I get a house. Because no believer, the love is flowing. Are you with me here? The love is flowing. Someone will say, I want to raise up another business now. I am a businessman already. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to raise up another entrepreneur in the body of Christ. So you invest in someone else. I say, start this business. I'm giving you this money or I'm looking Owning you this morning, any way you choose so, to give you a start and raise you up. When that person gets up, then that person says, I want to do the same for another brother or another sister because the, tra the train continues, the line continues, the mission continues. Come on, am I talking about love this morning? Brothers and sisters, the only way we can break this cycle, we have to use love. We have to get back to basic and apply love. Love is not talk, love is walk. Love is action, and God is calling us back this month to the place of love. Do I have anybody in the church with me? If you are walking with me, then touch that love button. My God, that the enemy knows that we are united. My God, come on, believers, you can't say amen. Let me hear you. So put your love button up if you're up and you're awake this morning. Bless Jesus. We got to get love. We have to, have to demonstrate this thing. The word of the Lord continues, believers. It's not true yet. Ah, the Bible says, no, that they had all things common. This is what the church should be. We should have all things common, helping each other. If a believer is not growing and climbing, it must be that that believer determined not to grow. My God, but we should do everything within our power to make sure that they grow accordingly. Now, look at this now. Verse 45. Acts chapter 2 and verse 45. They sold the property and possessions to give to everyone who had need. Oh my God. Believers, open your eyes to the early church right now. Let us see what was taking place in the book of Acts. They sold properties. Someone came to church and said, oh, Bishop Pinner, guess what happened? That sister is in need. I heard that there's a need in the church and we want to meet in hands and crop, hands, hands and heart. I have a piece of property. This is it. I'm giving my property over so that this can be given, amen, to bless whoever needs a blessing. Believers, I have two cars. I'm showing one of my cars into this ministry because I want someone to be blessed. I have this amount of money in the bank. I'm going to take up 10% 20%, 30%, and I'm going to put it over so that someone can be blessed. Come on, believers. That is the spirit of love. My God. The Bible said they sold properties, but we are in the season right now where everyone, the Bible used the term heap up. We want to heap it up. We want to be at the, be a part of the Forbes magazine, the most, the highest, the mo who has the most money, who has the most disbelievers. Hear me. This is not what God is calling us to. God is calling us, he says, hear me, when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over into the bosom. You will never give or lose. My God, if you heap up, you will lose it at some point in time. Because when the hour comes for us to go home, when the hour comes for us to die, I have never seen a man who driving a car. My God, too. I mean, you can't drive a car out of this life. You cannot take a house out of this life. When the hour comes for us to go, we have to leave every single thing behind so believers might as well we make some good investment and the Lord told me he said good investment is not only investing in this world my God is good to invest in this world and please hear me go hear me go I'm not beating investment in this world because we must invest to to, 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 to turn over that which we have. But the greatest investment is when you invest in the lives of people. When you take somebody from where they used to be and you transform their lives, you find a little school child who's struggling and they have the ability to do well, but they don't have the finances and you take that child to school. Oh my God, you are
are giving that child a lifetime of education to transform not just his life, but his family's life and generations' life. Believers, come on. We're on a love campaign this morning. We're on a love revival this morning. Show me that you love me. My God, show me that you care. Show me that you mean business. Show me and don't tell me anymore. We have been hearing this love, 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 love thing too much and it has become watered down. We must have something that stands behind it to show that I mean it. I mean what I say. I'm going to walk the walk. I'm going to do the things. The Bible said they sold properties. They gave their possessions. They gave their assets. They gave things to show that, listen, I am in the business of love. My God, this was the early church. Believers, we don't spend time on these scriptures. You know where we spend time? We spend time in hearing about how we can go deeper and climb higher. But you will see in Corinthians, I don't know if I have time to go there, but Corinthians will show you that you can go deep and you can go high, but you have no love. And that is serious and where God himself is concerned. Believers, I prefer not to live into a mansion. I don't want to live in a mansion I don't have love. I don't want to drive the, 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 the latest bins and don't have love. I don't want to own a whole, a whole I mean, fleet of, of, of cars or a stretch of properties and don't have love. Brothers and sisters, let us stop and do self-evaluation this morning because God is speaking to us. There's a mission in the kingdom that he wants us to do. He wants us to demonstrate love, show love daily, not just once a while, but daily. My God, where is your time going? Where your time goes shows what you love. Where your money goes show what you love. Are you ready to hear somebody? Because we must understand here that if we love God, we must demonstrate that we love God. How many persons know that by showing that we love God is by showing that we love his people. When you show that you love his people, we show that we love God. How can you love God that you can't see? And your brother is right beside you and in front of you. And you pass that brother. You don't speak to that brother. Remember many years ago, one young man who sat on the corner. He said to a church sister who went back to evangelize to him. He said, every Sunday morning, I watch you go to church. And you pass me right here. You don't even say morning. You just dress nicely and you kept going up. And I sat here every Sunday morning. And you don't say anything to me. And now, sorry, it wasn't evangelized, but now you're having a fundraiser. You come back to me. And you want me to participate. You have, never, you have never invited me to church. You have never said anything about God to me. But now you come back. Brothers and sisters, is it a possibility that we are passing some people daily? We drive past them with our windows up. We are so heavy under that which we are doing and participating in that we don't see anything else. How many persons know that we can be caught up in the clouds so much that we don't see anything else? This morning, brothers and sisters, we want God to remove that evil veil from our eyes. Because sometimes we may be thinking that we are seen when we are not. Sometimes we are only seeing what the flesh wants us to see. We are not seeing what the spirit wants us to see. The rich ruler came to Jesus and he said, Master, how can I enter the kingdom? What can I do? How can I have eternal life? What? He said, sell everything you have and give your money to the poor. This man said, oh no, it's too hard. I can't do this. He had no idea that Jesus was showing him how to invest in the kingdom. You can never give to God and lose. No, my God. Believers, we must be on a mission. The early church showed us what love is. My God, they sold property and possessions to give to everyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with gladness and sincerity and sincere hearts. Oh, brothers and sisters, there was a brotherly love that was so strong in the church that people went from home to home, had home prayer meetings and all of these things. Do you realize that we're in a time and season that, listen, 
Nobody is inviting you to the home again. No, not again. Listen, those days are O V E R. A matter of fact, persons are not even staying for fellowship at church anymore. Church is like the workplace. You go in, you clock in, you clock out, you go. That's it. This is the mood we are in. But brothers and sisters, this is not the old early church. The early church, brothers and sisters, they would have even host to host prayer meeting. That was the kind of spirit. That was the kind of environment that they were in. The flow that was there, that persons would just, you could feel the love. The Bible says Lydia in Acts 16, when she got saved, as soon as she got saved, she said to Paul and Silas, she said, men of God, if you discern that I'm in good standing, please come and stay in my home. I give you a room, I give you rooms in my home to stay. I will cook for you, I'll wash for you, I'll do everything while you're in this commute, this, in this region. That was in Lydia opening her home. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying you should open your home to everybody. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying here that this is a season where we must have a revival. There got to be a revival of love. There must be some demonstration of love, brothers and sisters. Do you realize that we are moving and drifting further and further away from the original principles? And now we have this diluted thing where we do as we please. And we do as we please and we say it's right. Brothers and sisters, let us go back to the text. God wants us to love. And love means that there must be sacrifice. Love means that there must be demonstration of the love we speak of. My God, we must understand here that the early church had so much power in it. Miracle signs and wonders worked in it. Because what happened? They had love. Not just the demonstration of the spirit. But they had the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, among other things. We must understand it wasn't just about the operation of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit. The Bible says here in the same chapter in Acts chapter 2, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Oh my God. You know one of the pulling factors? There are several pulling factors. One, the miracle signs and wonders that took place. And that's what we normally focus on. But this morning, I open your eyes to see that the next pulling factor, which was very important in the early church, was the demonstration of love. Oh my God. You could feel the love. They could feel the tangible feeling of love in the early church. I mean, do you know that the early church was heavily persecuted also? But despite the heavy persecution, the love was so strong that one, they were willing to die for Christ. And number two, they were willing to do anything for their brother and sisters. We must understand, hear me EBMS. Hear me those persons in the Zoom room. Hear me those persons on Facebook. I have more word this morning, but I feel I want to break right here because hear me, God is saying I'm calling the body of Christ to a revival of love. Yes, a revival of love. We pray. Listen, do we ever have a, early, a late night prayer meeting just praying for love? But we have had late night prayer meetings, praying for the prophetic gift, praying for the healing gift, praying for the miracle signs and wonders, praying for the finances. But we must understand that love is what pulls people. Love is what pulls people into the body of Christ. Not just talk love, but real demonstration of love. This morning, brothers and sisters, last week, I don't know how many persons took the challenge up. That you found five persons and you demonstrated love by telling that person you, person you love them. I don't know if you did. It's always good to follow instructions, you know, believers. Because you know what happened? If you can follow small things, then you won't follow big things. Amen. So now there's going to be another challenge. This week, brothers and sisters, as Jesus sent the disciples out, so will you be sent this morning. That this week, there should be a demonstration of love that is unusual for you. Do something. 
if it's to meet a stray, if it's to meet a stranger on the street. I remember once one person testified in the Zoom at some point in time that they were offered coffee and something by a stranger. Believers, there are times, I mean, things that has happened several times where persons were in the shopping line shopping and somebody doesn't walk up and say, don't worry, I'll pay them for you. I'll settle it. I'll do so. Mm-hmm. Believers, this week, this week, this month, let me wait to this month, do something that is not common for you. Something that is unusual. Bless someone in an unusual way. And when you do so, please don't stop and think about, I didn't hear thank you. I didn't see the, the appreciation. Come on, where we get this from? But listen, brothers and sisters. How many times you just bless us and we don't even say thanks? How many times he had, I mean, you woke us up this morning, probably many persons didn't even pray to say, Lord, thank you for this morning. We just move forward. Can you imagine he healed 10 lepers? One came back to say thank you. But for us, anything we do, I say, everybody must say, oh, good job. Well done. Oh, thank you. Oh, and we feel good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Let us get it together. You should do something and it doesn't matter what the person will say, I don't say. I'm doing it from my heart. I'm doing it for you. And that's, if you say thanks, then that's fine. I appreciate it. But even if you don't say thanks, hear what the Bible says, Proverbs. It says, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. So it means, I guess, what happened? My payment is not coming from the one who I gave it to. How many persons know that your blessing is not from who you sow to give to or lend a hand to? No. If you walk over to someone and you build them a house, man, whether they, you, for example, there are some persons, when they do something for you, for life, you, you are held accountable. <laughs> Listen, for life, you must be spending the rest of your life and tell them thanks and show them, oh, I appreciate you. And oh, every time you see them, oh, my, my, let me use Brother Rob, my good friend. I know he has a good spirit. Oh, Brother Rob, oh, you did that. Oh, and every time I testify, it must be that Brother Rob did, Brother Rob. Come on, man. Believers, that is where we are trying to build up ourselves, our ego. My God, we must crush this. Love is not like that. You love someone, you do it freely. You do it willingly. You don't even have to say thank you. It would be nice of you to say thank you. But I'm doing it for you because I love you. I'm doing it for you because I care about you. My God, brothers and sisters, the Samaritan did it for, I mean, the Samaritan did it for that gentleman. Just like that. I don't know if he was conscious enough at that point in time to say thank you. But he did it anyway. So I'm, I'm saying to everybody here, do something nice for someone, whether they say thank you, yes or no. And don't spend 10 days later and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I did the right thing, but they're not even showing any form of appreciation for that which I did. <laughs> Come on, get that self out. Get it out, get it out, get that out, get it out. Yes, it should be nice. They say so, that is basic courtesy. But if it's not so, what do you do? Move on. You have sown a good thing, leave it. Do you know that what the enemy is trying to do? He wants you to go back and mess up that good thing you did with your thoughts, negative thoughts and negative energy and negative stuff. How many persons know that the reason why we don't receive some harvests from the seeds we have sown is because after we sow that seed, we go back to say, oh, I'm not sure if it was the right ground and I'm not sure if it's this and we put doubt and all of that bad water on the seed and damage that seed. No, brothers and sisters, move in faith, move in glory. As I said before, I can't finish this. I don't get into Corinthians right now to speak to you that love is the most important thing. But you must get where I'm going this morning. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, worldwide, those who are hearing me, God is calling us to a revival of love. You may be saying, oh, Bishop, you don't know. I'm so loving. Here, next dimension. Next dimension. Next dimension. Because what happened? We don't want to say, oh, love from our perspective. Brothers and sisters, there are dimension to this thing. The Bible said, if you only love those who love you, you have no love. If you only love those who give to you, you have no love. In the book of Mark, he says, guess what happened? You must love those who, who despitefully use you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil about you. Brothers and sisters, let us leave that for next week. I know this is a next level right now. A next level of love. But 
Everywhere you are, brothers and sisters, do me a favor. Find your love button right now if you're in church and give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus this morning. Amen. Give it up for Jesus as we're in this love month. Amen. We show some love right now. Give it. This is your way of saying amen and receiving the word. Amen. Find that love button. Find that love button. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. We're going to take an unusual one this morning. Number two, I told you, number one, that you should do something this week, this month that is unusual. And a matter of fact, next week, I'm going to ask you. Yes, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you what, if you did anything. Yes. Did you do anything? Praise God. Number two, I know you're not doing it for me, but guess what happened? You're doing it for the kingdom of the living God. And therefore what happens? Sometimes we need a push. Amen. That's why the Bible says he sent the prophets, Habakkuk and those persons, when the children of Israel had stopped moving and working, he, he raised up prophets to speak to them, to inspire them again and push them again. This is what is happening in this season. We just need another push. Number two, brothers and sisters, just in case we had done anything that doesn't represent, represent love, we did anything in a way that maybe we're ignorant towards it. We're asking God to forgive us of all the opportunities we missed and all the things we did and we should have and the things that we should have done and we didn't do. So to put us in good standing this morning, because we need new opportunities. We need that the next time around, I want eyes to see and ears to hear. We want to be like a Samaritan. We don't want to pass anybody in the street when we should assist that person. We want to make sure that we make good on our opportunities and we need this kind, need this move this time around. This time around, we don't want to be like the priest. We don't want to be like the Levi. We want to be like the Samaritan. Is anybody with me this morning? We want to be like the Samaritan. I don't want to go to heaven. The Lord said, look at it. You passed that person. You passed that person. You did this. You did that. And it didn't represent me well. No. We want to hear the Lord says, well done. Well done, Brother Rob. You did a great job that morning. You did a great job that evening. We, you did a wonderful job. And you represented me well. Glory to God. Believe us, I'm feeling the spirit of the living God. Can we still feel the spirit when we speak about love? Come on, give God a praise if you can in your own space right now. Give him a praise, 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 give him a praise. Take your right hand and put it on your stomach right where your heart is. Ooh, Jesus, take your right hand right now and say, God, I give you authority to invade my life, invade my heart. Do as you please. Put your love in me like never before. Use me as an instrument of love. Oh, God. Come on, once more. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Can you? I'm feeling the presence of the living God in this place now. Jesus, now, my God, now I'm feeling Jesus. Come on, say, Father, with your right hand right there, right over your heart here. We know that we're not talking just about the physical heart, but put your hand right over that area there and say, God, invade my life, invade my body with so much love and use me as an instrument of love. That when others see me, they will see an instrument of love representing you in the kingdom of the living God. Put your hand on your head right now quickly and say, Lord, help me never to miss an opportunity of love, showing love. Let my eyes be open. Let my ears be open that I will see the opportunities that you provide me with the resources you have given me, that I will demonstrate love the best way I can so that I will give you the glory all the days of my life. Oh.